Hello and welcome to this special episode. This episode is special because it was voted for by my Patreon members and YouTube members. So thank you first of all to everyone who voted and showed your support and voting for this episode. So what are we doing today? Today we are looking at level persistence. What that means is basically traveling from one level to the other while saving what state the level was in prior to us leaving it. Therefore, we can go back to it and see its state. So the purpose of this experiment and test today, uh, I've set up a simple experiment here with two levels. And each level has five pickups that I can go around and pick up. Here's five there. And if we go to level two, there's another five there. And I've got it set to a key bind there for now. So on level one, I'm going to pick up two items here. And you can see I've got a HUD interface element here showcasing the two points that I've just collected. Now, if I go to level two, I can go up here and collect these two points up there. And now I've got four points. Now, if I go back to level one, you'll see it saved which two I picked up, leaving the last three that I have yet to pick up. And similarly, on level two, it's remembered which two I've picked up and not the other three. And I can go around and affect that by picking up more. Go back to this level and pick up more there. And there you go. So we're going to look at two things in this. So we're looking at level states and transferring them over when we save them. And also looking at player data. So there's points, for example, how do you transfer those data points over? I've also set up how to set it so you can store where the player's location was. Um, as you can see here, if I go into this corner here, transfer to level one, it saved that position and moved us in the position in that same position level one. Now, you'd use that for like checkpoints or other things like that to remember where the player should last be. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. So what we're going to do is going to go through and show you how to set this up. If you want these project files, you can find them over on Patreon. Gold members and higher can access all of our project files uh, as part of their tier uh, rewards. So let's get started on how to get this set up. So to get started, we're going to not go through like how to do pickups or level transitions, anything like that, because that's stuff that is basic and is found in all other tutorials all over the place. So that's not the point of this video. If you want to know more about those sort of things, you can find plenty of information about that sort of stuff elsewhere on my channel. But what ultimately you're going to want to do is apply what you're going to do in this video to whatever it is that you want to save and store across your levels. So in this tutorial, we're going to do something quite basic, but what you want to do is probably a bit more elaborate. It's exactly the same process. It's just multiplied by how many things you want to save. You'll see what I mean when we get started here. And to get started, we're going to look at the third person game mode in this case. So the game mode is what's attached to each world and it is loaded when the map is loaded up and it's closed when the map is switched out or unloaded. So in the game mode is where we're going to set up our save functions for our game here. So I'm going to go to my game mode. And in here, we're going to create a new function called init level save data. So initialize level save data. And in here, we're going to first of all, get the level name. So come out of here and get level name. And that gets you, well, the level name. It's pretty simple, really. And that comes out as a string. Now, this is useful because what we're going to do is we're going to store the save data in the same name as our level name. Now, what's the benefit of doing it like this? Well, it makes it so we can just make this function once and it will work for every single level that this game mode is using. So you don't have to keep making custom functions for each level. So we're going to get current level name and we're going to do does save game exist. And the slot name is the file name of your save file. So drag that across like so, and that gets you a boolean. The boolean is going to go into a branch because it's either going to return true or false. If it's true, we have got a save file, so we have to load it. And if it's false, we don't have a save file, so we have to create one. So let's start off with if we have got a save file existing, so on true here. If that's the case, we also want to get the current level name again. Because what we want to do is set it to load the game from that slot. So drag out from here and do load game from slot. And you'll see you need a slot name, hence why we needed to get current level name again. 
Once you get load game from slot, if you hover your mouse over return value, you can see that this is a save game object reference. Not a particular uh, object that we need because we need to make a custom save game object. So let's create that. So let's go into our content browser here, go to add new, blueprint class, and in all classes box down the bottom, search for save game object. Select that and click select. And you want to name this like level save data or level save object. So level data object, for example. And we're going to go into back into my third person game mode. And on the load game from slot, we're going to drag the return value out here. And we are going to cast to level data object, the object we just made. So once we've got that, we then want to store this object reference as a variable. So we come out of here and promote that to a variable and we'll call that level save object. That's important because we need to be able to access our level save data to in order to save it to the slot. If you want more information about how to save and load games, please check out my saving and loading videos. There's three of them. I'll go over a few things there. Worth checking out if you want to get a handle on how so saving and loading works. But the general gist of it is whatever variables are inside this level save object when you, at the time of being saved, they're the objects, that's the data that's getting saved. So, now we've got that loaded up, we want to go down the false path. So this is if we don't have a save game object. So on the false here, we're going to come down here and do create save game object. Choose the level data object type. And then I'm gonna drag my level save object variable out and choose set. Plugging that all in like so. So now that is gonna save and create our level save game object. Hit compile, then go to the event graph. On the event graph, we can go begin play, and we're gonna tell it to initialize the level save data. So drag that function out that we just made, and there you go. So now when the level is first loaded up, a save file is being created, and that save file is basically empty now, uh, so we need to add data to it. So let's go into our save game object. In our save game object, as I said before, this is where you store all the values that you want to save onto disk. So on the variables here, we're gonna create a new variable, and this is gonna be the collected pickups. So if you've got things like uh, physics actors that you want to store the location of, like the players throwing stuff about and you wanna save that location, this would be just like movable actors. You just get all actors that are movable and store them to this uh, an array. And that's really all you're doing. So this would be collected pickups. And this is going to be an array of actors. So actor array. It compile. So this is the main thing that's being saved. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's anywhere else. It has to be here. So on this save data object, we're also going to put in a function to handle the loading of which actors need to be destroyed because they've been collected. So on the functions, we're going to go new function and we'll create this one as load collected pickups. So these load collected pickups basically means that we're going to go through the collected pickups here and remove them from the level. Because when you load up a new level, everything's loaded that is set inside that level. What we need to then do is uh, start destroying all the things that the player has either moved to, uh, or destroyed in some kind of way, or whatever it may be, you want to deactivate or destroy stuff based on what's in this array. So for example, if you've got a, a group of enemies that the player has killed, you'd store that list of enemies in an array and you do this exact same function that you're doing here, but to destroy all the enemies from the map. So let's get this load collected pickups working. I'm going to drag out my array and first of all we need to check the length of it so get uh, we're just typing length and we're going to check if this is greater than zero if it is great that means there's something in there we can continue with so next we're going to drag the collected pickups back out again and do a for each loop to pass through every item in our array with every item, we're going to check if it's a valid reference. So do is valid, and you do the question mark one. 
And if it is valid, we're going to tell it to destroy itself. So drag the array element out here. Destroy actor. Like so. And that is how you load up the data. So this is going through all the collected items that we've got stored in our array and destroying them from the map. So that's how we load it, but how do we actually save which ones are going to be in this array? So when we compile this and let's look at the pickup. So on the pickup, we've got a very basic act begin overlap, call to the player character and add points. Essentially what it is. And the add points on the player character, simple function which adds add score to it and updates the HUD. You also see alongside here my begin play, we've got to create HUD, add it to the viewport. But more importantly, I've got the game mode, cast a third person game mode and stored it as a reference. This is important because we want to keep hold of a reference that is directly to the game mode without having to cast it every single time. So now we have that game mode reference, we're going to go into the pickup and we're going to use that on here. So as third person character, because we've used it here on the third person character, we can actually access that game mode. But so drag out from here, type in game mode and you'll see get game mode. From there, we can now get access to its uh, save data object. So from here, we're going to drag out and get level data or save object here. And from that save object, we're going to get the collected pickups. We're then going to drag out from there and go add unique. Now add this object reference to this array. So that's, uh, we'll come down here and do self, adding it to that array. After which then we take to destroy the actor, like normal. Okay, add points, get game mode, level save data, click the pickups, add unique, and then destroy the actor finally. So now that's being added to that array, uh, by default, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to be added to that array. We now need to tell it to save that array to the file. So that's handled on the game mode. So let's go back to the game mode. And in here, we're going to create a new function. And this function is going to be save level data. And in here, we're going to drag our level save object out, choose get. And then from here, we're going to get level name. And then we're going to go save game to slot. Now the save game object is your level save object. And the slot name is the return value of your get current level name. Hit compile when you're finished there. So that's the function. We now need to call it. So where you save it is up to you. Like it could be when you hit a checkpoint at a certain time interval, cutscene, whatever it may be. I'm going to save mine when I transfer out of the level. So I've got that currently set up on my player character with a simple key press. So one goes to level one, two goes to level two. Very simple. So on here, I'm going to do the game mode from the variable list. And then from here, I'm now going to call the save level data. Plug that in. I'm going to do the same for level two here. Now there's loads of ways of doing this. Um, this is just one of a few. So try to figure out how it's working here, then you can sort of customize it to your own needs when you make your own games. But more importantly here, we win push one, it's gonna save the level data, i.e. that array of collected items, and then open the level correctly afterwards. Now we've saved it, we now want then to now load it. So let's go to the game mode, and in here we're gonna to go to the event graph, and at the end of begin play, we're gonna drag the level save object out, and call that load function we made. Basically clearing all the ones we've collected. Let's hit compile and test that out. So I can walk up to these, pick up a couple of there, and push one here to transfer to back to level one. And you can see those two are still gone. Take the middle one here and transfer around. And you can see those two are now gone. So that's that working. Uh, we now need to do that for the points on the screen. So at the moment our score is one and it goes back to zero every time we do this. So at the moment we're saving level data. 
and that's persistent across levels. So look, hang on, be best if I show you that. Um, so, oh, hang on. By the way, if you when you're testing this out, you may want to find yourself resetting your save data. Easiest way of doing that is going to your project files and deleting the save data. So I'll show you where they are. In your project folder, look in the saved folder, go to save games and just delete the data that's there. So if I push play again, they're now back. So as you can see here, I can pick up two here, go to level two, pick up these two, go to level one, and they're still gone. Okay, so it's remembered what my state of the world was in. So let's now get working with the points on the screen. So what we're going to do here is we're going to basically create a whole new save file um, that's separate from the level save files. So at the moment in our folder here, you can see we've got level one and level two being saved out. Uh, we have another one here for player data. So let's go into our game mode and add that in. So similarly to init level save data, we can do init player data. Now the easiest way to do this, if we go to our function list for init level save data, right click on that and duplicate it. And we'll call it init player data. Player save data. And the only difference here is that we don't use get current level name. So we'll remove that and just type in the name here of player data. Similarly here, player data. And there you go, that just does that. We also want to change the save game object. So currently we're using, it's got set as level data object. We're going to create another one for the player character. So go to add new blueprint class and search for again, save game object. And this will be called player data object. Go back to a game mode and we'll change the create save game object here to player save data. A data object, sorry. And we'll get that away. And with this return value, we'll promote that to a variable and call it player save object. Up the top, we're going to change the cast and the set here. So then from the return value, we cast to player data object. And then we set that to the player save object that we made just now. Like so. Hit compile. Go back to your event graph and just drag that in. Here we go, init player save data. Like so. So what we're going to do here is we're going to store the points the player has on this player save data. So let's go into the player data object and make a new variable in here called points. And that'll be a variable type of integer. Hit compile. And that's basically it. Then on our player character, we want to in here. When we add points to our game, on the end here, we're going to get the game mode out. In the game mode, we're going to get the player data, uh, no, uh, player save object. There we go. And we're going to get the points from it. So set uh, points. And this is going to be set by the player um, at a particular point. So here we don't want to do it every time we're adding points to the uh, score here. Instead, what we're going to do, we're going to add it to when we transfer level. So let's move these along further. Drag that down. And in fact, we can just use this game mode that's pre-existing. Save us a node. And drag this set points in, like here. And plug that in. Like here too. Now points is going to be equal to the points here and here. And that target goes down there too. So there's some basic stuff going on there. Okay, we're just setting the player, uh, player save data's objects point score to be the same as the point score on the player. Pretty basic. Now when we take it to save that object 
it's going to save the points. So let's do the saving. On the uh, third person game mode here, we're going to create another function here called save player data. And on save player data, we're going to get the player save object out. Remember, that's where we're setting our points. And then from there, we're going to do save game to slot. And we just type in the name player data. Hit compile. So that's saving that information. What about loading it? Okay, so now what we're going to do here is when we are creating and loading the data object up, we're going to go into the uh, third person character. And after we set the game mode and begin play, we're going to get the player data object. Uh, player save object, I called it. Yep, there you go. And from there, we get the points. And we're going to set that to the points on the player. And there you go. So that's now loading the information up from the player save object. The actual loading of the object happening on the game mode when we first start the game up with init player save game object with load game from slot. So let's save this and and oh sorry, then we have to take to actually save the file. Um so on save player data here, we have to call this on the third person character. So when we move we're gonna call this out from the game mode, sorry. And call save player data. Hit compile. Oh, target. There you go. Hit compile. So now when we're adding points to it, we're then saving the player file. And then we've got a load file when the player character is first introduced. And there you go. So let's see how this works. Testing it out, we'll remove the previous save data we've got here. And then play this game. So points is set to nothing at the moment. So click one up. One, two, three. And then if I go to player number two, points is still showing it zero, but then I pick one up, it says four. So why is it saying zero at the start? Well, when we're going into a third person character and we're loading up the points here, we haven't actually told it to update the HUD as well. So let's grab this update HUD function here and just drag that on to there like so. So the number was correct, it just wasn't updating the HUD. So let's play the test that again. And you'll see the save file stored, how many we've got. Pick up those rest there and go to level two. There they are, pick up those ones, go to player one, player two, or level two, sorry. Pick up that one, back to level one, level two, and you get a gist. So there we have it storing not just player state, but also now level state. So we can now use that to combine the two. And you can do this for as many things as you like. So you'll probably have a save file that is for settings alone, one for player data, one for each level. Or you may do one object which contains all the level data. You may have different arrays based on level data. So for example, my level data object could be just one object that is spawned and it's fixed in name. And I may just have collect pickups for level one, collect pickups level two, collect pickups level three, and so on and so forth. Or these could be structs, it could be all sorts of things. Whatever it is, you just save it to a separate level data object and load it up separate from the rest of the objects in the game. Um, and that's basically it. Um, and there you go. So to test it out, don't forget, you just have to remove the save data. You can see the different save files, different slots here. And you might have a few in here, but ultimately, there you go. Just remove those and push play. And that's all back again. And I'll take the middle ones like so. At level two. one and you can see it's still gone and that brings us to the end of this episode 
Uh, so there's lots you can do with level persistence, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can save a lot more data to your thing. Now, keep in mind, the more data you save, the longer it will take to save and load. This is where you use loading screens to hide these saves or hide these loads. That way it doesn't get hitch-ups or weird stuff happening as things are spawned in and then suddenly removed in front of your eyes. So make sure you try and build a load screen in if you're doing too many things at once. But ultimately that's it, it's just a matter of scale now, you're just adding diverse arrays or structures based on whatever information you want to store. Maybe you want to store the exact position and location of various enemies. That could be a map for example, each one being a reference to the enemy actor and their index and then storing their transform. It could be as many things as you like like that. So thank you very much for watching this episode and thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members who voted for this episode. If you like what I do and you want to support me, head over to patreon.com forward slash RyanLaley. And even if you become a $5 tier, uh, you become uh, able to vote on next month and each month after on what videos you would like to see next. So if you want to join that, head over to the website and show your support there. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out, so make sure you do. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.